All right, everyone. I said I was a bit more optimistic about Season of the Chosen Season 13 because there is no expansion to back it up. It's got to deliver on its own. My first impressions, based on the first couple of days, solid. Very, very solid. There's going to be spoilers in this video. Please don't watch if you don't want spoilers. Story content. I get that if you want Battlegrounds to be there right at the start of the season, you got to give us a reason to, you know, do them. The season starts with the Vanguard and Cabal talking about an alliance to fight off the Hive. Very interesting. But Keitel wants the Vanguard to bow to the Cabal, be under their command, and Zavala is not vibing with that at all. I do wish that there was a little more back and forth between the Vanguard and the Cabal in terms of that discussion, in terms of that sort of story development. Seems like that conversation ended in about two minutes. Efficient, sure. Just kind of wish there was a little more drama there. A little more drama. I will say that it was very fun seeing the crow in the helm as someone in a leadership-ish position. I do wonder the implications of him getting caught should that ever happen. But for now, it's, it's pretty fun. He's also whistling quite a familiar tune if you hang out idle in the helm. Let's talk about the helm. I got two negatives about the helm. Everything else is it's pretty good. The first is that I can't walk to it while I'm in the tower. And I imagine that was done on purpose. I'm not an engineer. But I gather that having a zone dedicated to seasonal content will probably allow Bungie to do more interesting things when it comes to that seasonal content. Specifically with characters and dialogue, vendors, story setup, all those kinds of things. As opposed to having to place certain NPCs here and there, all while in shared zones like in the tower or patrol areas, destinations... So I understand. The second negative is that you didn't include any new voice lines from the Drifter and the Umbral Decoder. What a missed opportunity. Big missed opportunity. Otherwise, it's a great space. Got a Postmaster. It's got a Vault. That's great. Seems like this is going to be sticking around for the long term. And again, if this allows Bungie to do more stuff, more interesting stuff, I'm all for it. Battlegrounds are pretty fun. As far as an activity goes, it's a pretty streamlined, kind of strike-esque experience. Here are the dudes, shoot the dudes, nothing too crazy with mechanics, throw a ball here, destroy a shield there. It's fine. It's definitely better than the hunts for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's more than one minute long. Number two, I guess it's match made, so that's a that's a positive. Number three, there's three reasons. The ratio in which I am participating in this content versus seasonal content is much better than last season. Last season felt like it was about a 90-10 ratio of core to seasonal. This time around, we're getting much closer to that 50-50 mark. Cabal Gold is not exclusive to the core playlist. You want to do a dungeon? Gold. You want to mess around on EDZ? Gold. Are you raiding? How about some gold? It doesn't feel like it takes nearly as long to farm gold compared to lure charges. Lure. 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 To farm gold compared to lure charges. You can get a couple of extra gold when fully upgraded per battleground run as well. All of these things combine for a way better seasonal to core playlist gameplay balance. The charge and the gold cap is a bit low as we start the season, but it is upgradable. And I think the blow from being capped is also softened by the fact that Battlegrounds are more fun than Hunts were in Season 12, so I don't mind running them as much, but we'll talk about Fun Factor in just a minute. Also, can we talk about the Thresher in the Nessus Battleground? Why don't you find who's ever piloting that ship and put them in charge of the Cabal? Because I'll take the under on them taking over the entire universe in a week, by themselves. Jeez. As far as the seasonal loot loop, it's familiar. And don't be surprised to see Bungie adopt these kinds of loops more often. We have the 7x3 upgrade grid back from Season 10 and Beyond Light. Umbrals are back from Season 11. And we have the charge mechanic from Season 12. The whole charging mechanic 
is a bit more balanced, which is good. Umbrals seemed pretty universally liked. That's fine. I'm not the biggest fan of the upgrade grid system, but I suppose it's not a super bad thing. I'm just pretty neutral on it. You do have to be a bit more careful with spending your umbrals, though, as they're not dropping like crazy as they were in Season 11, but you're still getting them a healthy amount. Hopefully, this means that, combined with the fact that some of the Tier 3 costs are really up there, we will be seeing loot from this slightly less often, but of a higher quality. That's what I'm hoping for. I'm tired of being spammed with garbage and spending half of my time in my inventory dismantling stuff. The Devil's Lair is back, and I want to talk about it. This strike is so good. Why? Why the hell is this D1, the original strike, so good and so fun? Why? Well, Dado, it's the nostalgia. Destiny 1 so much better than Destiny 2. Shut up. Stop talking. Shut your mouth. Shut up. You want to actually know why? You want to know the real reason? Enemy friggin' density. There are well over 350 enemies in that strike alone. And in terms of geometry, it's not that big at all. I would guess it's a third of the size of something like the Corrupted, which has a similar amount of enemies, if not less. Some strikes don't even have 200 enemies. Arms Dealer? Less than 150 kills in a run. Scarlet Keep? Fewer enemies, and it's much longer. This place has 350, upwards of 400 enemies if you don't kill the final boss immediately. Why is that such a big deal, Dado? This seems really weird. For the first time in what feels like a long time, I'm not fighting to have fun. I'm just having fun. I'm not fighting with my teammates for kills, except on the rare occasion they're running Omega Warmind Cell Explosion Builds Leopard. I'm not trying to race ahead of my teammates for kills so that I can do my build or shoot my guns. I'm just killing tons of stuff, and I'm enjoying myself. It is built differently. Other strikes are all about push forward, go forward, go, go, go. Devil's Lair is about area control. You're fighting in an area, you're not leaving until everything dies, and encounters are designed around that concept. And they just pack in the enemies. And you can't just run ahead. You don't have to worry about that guy, or being that guy. To be clear, I ran Devil's Lair four times in a row, just doing Adept Nightfall, that's 12.30 on Tuesday, the first day. Things are still somewhat threatening, but they're dying pretty quickly too. I could easily get surrounded if I wasn't paying attention, but I could also just murder everything in sight. I wanted to go back in for a fifth run. It helps that the music is awesome too. Do this more. This is what I'm talking about. Enemy density. If we're going to be this strong, you need to throw more dudes at us for us to shoot, to explode, to kill. This is what I mostly enjoy about the Battlegrounds, although I would argue that you could still pour in even more enemies to kill. Enemy density's high. Good. People can have their own things to kill without feeling like they're racing to have the most fun. We can enjoy ourselves without stressing out about someone else stealing all the kills or running ahead. If we're gonna be this powerful all the time, more things to kill. Higher density. I would prefer it if it didn't come in the form of phalanx, of all things, but I'll take what I can get. More enemies, more things to kill. Everybody gets to have fun. No one needs to stress. This is what we need more of. Pile on the enemies. Keep them coming. Because now I don't need to feel like a jerk just because I want to play the game. Too much? All right, we'll dial it back. How about that recoil nerf on PC that everyone was crying about? Yeah, that... Ended up not really being that big of a deal. After all, huh? Can't wait for Bungie to announce that, like, it didn't get patched in properly in the next update has our guns turn into an earthquake in our hands. But, you know, for now, barely noticeable. I've heard good things about console SMG recoil and camera control. That's awesome. I'm stoked for you guys. Dungeons are dropping relevant gear again. We now have Shattered Throne and Pit of Heresy back in the rotation. Now, granted, they aren't giving powerful drops, but they are giving unique rolls on weapons and high stat armor. I got myself a rapid hit Dragonfly Waking Vigil on day one of the season. 
If they dropped Powerfuls, that'd be cool too, but I'm not too bent out of shape about that. This is great for those smaller teams who want to be able to farm some more powerful stuff, but maybe can't get into the raid. Or just for people who want a little change of pace. I know people like farming guns. It's all I ever see. More guns, more guns. Granted, people probably want new guns to farm, and yeah, that, you know, that'd be nice. But at least these weapons have revised perk pools to make things a little more interesting. Speaking of guns, got a pretty big chunk of guns with this season too. Got those seasonal guns, got some nightfall guns, got some trials guns, got some guns returning from previous seasons that we haven't seen in a long time. It's pretty good. Can we talk about Frenzy real quick? The new perk Frenzy? Great perk for doing almost absolutely nothing. You stay in combat for a while, you shoot some dudes, it activates... As long as you keep shooting, it stays active. Once you're done with combat, it ends. Big benefits, almost no work. Would prefer to work a little harder for that big reward, but look out for Frenzy. It's very, very good on a workhorse-style weapon. I have it on the new SMG with Zen Moment. It's a killer. It's awesome. The seasonal weapon, seasonal exotic weapon, is pretty fun as far as bows go. I like the chain explosions that you can make happen. Can make for some good ad clear, but... I feel like Trinity Ghoul gets the job done pretty well there without nearly as much work. At least if you have the Trinity Ghoul catalyst. Otherwise, not a whole lot to this bow. You prime some enemies with a hip fire and then you blow them up with aim down sights. PvP, I did my stuff for the catalyst, but after playing with it for an extended session, it is uh, pretty safe to say that I will not be using it in PvP unless I get much better at using a bow in PvP. Speaking of weapons, rocket launchers. Pretty good. Eyes of Tomorrow got what appeared to be a big, big nerf that has been confirmed to be a bug. It is not an intentional nerf, so you can dial that energy back in a little bit. All right, it's a bug, not an intentional nerf. It's okay. Got some new seasonal mods too with the Elemental Wells. I haven't really messed around with them just yet to really give much insight. Maybe we'll make that its own video. Same thing with the exotic armor pieces. Haven't gotten any of them, haven't played with them uh, as of Wednesday night. I've been working on this instead, so we'll talk about that another time. The UI tweaks and adjustments are pretty sharp too, although, you know, UI has always been a very strong suit with Destiny. I have noticed some feedback about gear swapping though, that since the piece of gear you're replacing doesn't have the little flashing effect anymore, that it feels a little weird, like the game lagged or something and it didn't feel like it swapped, even though it did. Not sure how much that specifically needed to change, but, you know, all right, I guess. Gunsmith, you can see your rank and you can turn in 100 materials at a time to level up instantly. What a novel concept that we can finally turn in 100 at a time of a currency when people have five digit stockpiles of this currency. Gunsmith materials. If we can get that in more spots in the game, looking at you, Spider, that'd be great. A lot of good stuff here. A lot of good. Taking some of the better stuff from past seasons, combining it all, it's good stuff. I had a very good time playing the new stuff. Very good time on Tuesday. I want to continue to see Bungie innovate though. Continue to evolve the game, the experience, everything. Keep evolving. Yeah, we're in the honeymoon phase with this season, I know. But I don't think we even had a honeymoon phase last season. Good, good start. Feeling very energetic about this season. I don't know how much it's going to keep up, but as of this first week first couple of days things are pretty good thanks for watching i'll see you next time it doesn't feel like it takes nearly as long to farm gold compared to lore charges lure lore lure 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 charges <laughs> uh, it doesn't feel like it takes nearly as long to farm gold compared to lure charges. Lure, 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 lure. 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 It doesn't take, it, it doesn't feel like it takes nearly as long to farm gold compared to lure charges.
You can get a couple of extra gold when fully upgraded per battleground run as well. All of these things combine. 